A long time ago, I was having a very silly discussion with a colleague when he stated that I didn't deserve to make more money than him because he was more skilled and also because as I do like to simplify things too much, I was not getting few concepts correctly. At a first sight, I thought, well, oh, how rude, I have nothing to do with your frustrations, mate. But after this first thought, I told him that I understand his frustration and I wish him all the best when dealing or negotiating a deserved pay rise. And I gave him a few tips as well, but this is a topic for another video. Don't get me wrong, I didn't take it personal, but that conversation caught me thinking, because it is true, I do like simple things, is it the better? Being a physicist and a mathematics teacher for almost five years, and a university de degree teacher for more than a decade, taught me that if you can't put in simple terms what you are dealing or working with, you don't know what you're talking about. I do spend lots of time simplifying things, my red books, my articles, my YouTube channel are a very good example. I believe in any form of activity that can smooth the learning curve when adopting a new technology, so the user experience can be the best as possible. If a certain solution is difficult to install, troubleshoot and manage it, I will definitely have issues with it, because in my mind, the idea is an infrastructure solution being like a plug and play almost all the time so you can spend more time enjoying the benefits of it and less time maintaining it. Does that make sense? I hope yes. Well, in the end of the discussion, he ended up by requesting my assistance to run a workshop for a client, because apparently he was not successful on his first attempt, and the client requested for someone more skilled. Funny. Anyway, in this episode of Abelio Talks, I'm going to share with you what I did on that workshop. So in the end, you tell me what you reckon, okay? What is this? He was going to understand this as a letter A, but your computer understands like this. Another quick one. What is this? Humans will understand this as a letter B, but this is how it looks like to your computer. Every decimal symbol has its correlated binary combination. In other words, every time that you interact with your computer, regardless of what you are doing, if it is browsing on the internet, writing an email, editing a document, or even developing an application, the computer will translate your input into binary format so it can process and understand what needs to be done next. And all this happens transparently to the user. Changing a single digit from this sequence of zeros and ones will change the output too. Amazing, eh? Well, when developing applications, the thinking path is quite similar. According to the data input, transistors will manipulate sequences of zeros and ones to crunch a certain operation. But there's a problem. Storing information as either 0 or 1 can impact on the computing speed and efficiency because there's a natural limitation to it, to its architecture. Let me put it this way. As we will be analyzing one position at a time, you will struggle to do, for example, a multi-dimensional analysis. And even if you are using a supercomputer, for example, you will rely on the same process and Boolean algebra. With that, believe it or not, it seems like Moore's law is coming to an end as classical computing is reaching its limits. In the exact moment, and you know that, that new challenges are right in front of us. But as scientists were able to explore subatomic matter, they began to see more probabilistic states that meta took on many possible features in many different conditions. The field of quantum physics emerged to explore and understand this phenomena. So, 
by exploiting the properties of quantum mechanics, quantum computers excel at the challenge of evaluating multitudes of options that lend themselves well to these properties and exploring problems that have thus far been intractable. Remember that letter A in binary? So, imagine if you could change simultaneously those positions. We would get different letters or different combinations of letters and numbers, right? Likewise, quantum computing performs calculations based on the probability of an object's state before it is measured, instead of just ones and zeros. Based on quantum mechanics, its hardness, the unique ability of subatomic particles that allows them to exist in more than one state, which means they have the potential to process exponentially more data than classical computers. In simple terms, what we do when we try to solve a problem using quantum computing is we encode parts of the problem we are trying to solve into a complex quantum state. And then we manipulate that state to drive it towards what will eventually represent the solution. Let's dive a little bit more. I need to store the data somehow, right? For sure. So, in the same way that bits are used in a classical computer, at the heart of the quantum computer are what we call it quantum bits or qubits, which can store information in a quantum form. A single qubit can't do much, but thanks to one cornerstone of quantum mechanics, Call it entanglement. The combined states of the qubits contains more information than the qubits do independently. So, it is possible to set up qubits up such that their individual probabilities are affected by other qubits in the system. For example, a quantum computer with three entangled qubits is a bit like tossing three coins at the same time while they are spinning every possible combinations of heads and tails can be represented at once. And as you can imagine, the more qubits they are entangled together, the more combinations of information that can be simultaneously represented. Another important cornerstone of quantum mechanics is the interference. The principle of interference allows a quantum computer to cancel unwanted solutions and enhance correct solutions. Together, these two principles have no classical analogy and modeling them on a classical computer would require exponential resources. As you can imagine, the required infrastructure to run a quantum computer is not simple. I'm pretty sure you would find challenging to keep the system cold as it needs to be at absolute zero temperature, which is minus 273 degrees Celsius to operate. But the building blocks of quantum computing are already emerging. Quantum computing systems are running on the cloud at an unprecedented scale. Compilers, algorithms are rapidly advanced. Communities of quantum proficient talents are on the rise and leading hardware and software providers are publishing technology roadmaps. The technology's applicability is no longer a theory but a reality to be understood and planned for. Imagine discovering new materials for solar panels that help us obtain clean energy more efficiently, or accurately simulating aircraft parts, minutes as opposed to years. Envision drugs development that can sometimes bring on for a decade, coming to a fruition in months. Planetary scale issues such as climate change, world hunger, and the possibility of more pandemics require a powerful new tools to achieve breakthroughs. Quantum computing can help expedite solutions to these complex computational problems that face business and society. Pretty amazing, eh?
With that said, I will give you three reasons why I believe quantum computing is coming and it is coming fast. Reason number one, priorities of a post-pandemic world as entire industry face greater uncertainty. Business models are becoming more sensitive to and depending on new technologies. Quantum computing is poised to expand the scope and complexity of business problems we can solve. Reason number two, the future of computing. The integration of quantum computing with artificial intelligence and classical computing into a hybrid multi-cloud workflow will drive most of the significant computing revolutions in 16 years. Quantum paired workflows will radically reshape how enterprise works. And reason number three, the discovery driven enterprise. Enterprise will evolve from analyzing data to discovering new ways to solve problems. When combining with hyper automation and open integration, this will ultimately lead to new business models. But I don't think quantum computing will replace classical computing. Matter of fact, it will extend and complement it. Even for the problems that quantum computers can solve better, we will still need classical computers because data input and output will continue to be classical. Quantum computers and quantum programs will require a combination of classical and quantum processing, so it is a hybrid approach from the start. And it is precisely the advance in traditional classical computing plus advances in artificial intelligence that are driving the most important revolution in computing. Since Moore's law almost 60 years ago, quantum computing will complete a trinity of technologies. The intersection of classical bits, qubits and AI neurons. The synergy created by this triad, not quantum computing alone, are driving the future of computing. So, to wrap up, quantum computing is not a hype, it is something very real. And, by the way, it is a very good timing for organizational leaders to explore how the advent of this new technology could alter their plans and expectations. And please, let me know if I can help with something here, okay? I'd love to help. Well, you can explore the world of quantum computing for free on the IBM Cloud. You learn how to write quantum code, starting with absolute zero experience, and you can build your skills on the way. Well, that's to wrap up really, so you don't need to be that skilled. In case you would like to give it a try, I will share the link of IBM Quantum Computing website on the description of this link, okay? So, quantum computing is the most significant computer resolution in 60 years, and it is already in motion. My question to you is, are you ready for the quantum decade?